reason you're hearing. But when he had turned about and looked upon his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thy Savior is not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. I'll say that again. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thy savor is not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. My thought today would be. <coughs> You will succeed only when your assignment becomes an obsession. You will succeed only when your assignment becomes an obsession. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you, O God, for your spirit. Speak to our hearts and our minds as we go into your word. Give us ears to hear and the mind to obtain what the spirit says in the church. We'll be so able to give your name praise. The people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Focus is like a magnet. Jesus himself rebuked those who attempted to break his focus. An obsession from completing the will of the Father. When you give your attention, time, total effort to achieving your assignment, you will experience extraordinary currents of favor and miracles. As we have seen, whatever has the ability to keep your attention has mastered you. The Apostle Paul was obsessed with his assignment. This explains his remarkable success in the face of enemies, adversities, and even his friends who misunderstood him. It also explains his letter to the Philippians in Philippians the third chapter verse 13 and verse 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards 
the mark for the prize of the high calling in God in Christ Jesus. Paul moved away from past hurts, failures, and memories. Obviously, he had a photograph of these things before him, and he understood the following five keys. Developing a session for your assignment one, refuse any weight and distraction to your assignment. When God gave you something to do, you have to make sure you do it. You focus on it, you spend time in it, you meditate on it, and you trust God. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we all so <clears throat> are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every week everything that's holding you down, lay it aside, and sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Two, be ruthless and severe in any ties to a project not connected to your assignment. As Paul instructed Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 4, he said, no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Since he has been chosen by God to be a soldier, he can't allow these worldly things to overtake him and to make him go into war in that area. He said, my job is to please him, talking about God, because he's a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Three, constantly study your assignment. Study it. As the apostle urged Timothy, in 2.15, the second Timothy 2.15, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, you got to study your word. And when you study your word, you're studying God. And when you start to study in God, he said, then you're going to become, be approved by God that a workman that's not ashamed at all, rightly dividing the word of truth, rightly dividing, not going to isms and schism, going straight to what the word of God says. Amen. And when we start to operate in that area, we're going to find out that all kind of problems won't come because the simple fact you are uh, possessed or uh, obsessed, I'm sorry, obsessed with your assignment. And when you obsess with your assignment, you're going to have few friends or might not have none at all. Amen. Four, study conversations that are unrelated to your assignment. Conversation that you get in with people and it has nothing to do with your assignment, cut it off. Because it's not helping you. Amen. It's really, really taking you from your focus. Focus is like a magnet. 2 Timothy 2, 16, and then 23. He said, but shun profane and vain babblings. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. Some conversation, you can start talking about the park. But you wind up on the, on the side of the roof. Amen. Now, how did that get up there when I was down here? Right. And you understand, when you're dealing with people 
and you have a mind to serve God, folk going to come up with all kind of things. You say profound and vain babblings. Always complaining, always babbling, always finding fault. He said, look, that's not helping your assignment. Amen. And you have to back away from that. But foolish and unlearned questions, avoid. They be asking you stuff, and look, they don't even know what they're going to ask you. want to see if you have an answer. Mm -hmm. The foolish questioning, unlearned, knowing that they do, they are, they do gender strife. It's going to bring strife because you're going to wind up arguing if you ain't careful. Amen. Because you have a love for God, somebody's going to always try to take that from you. But you got to keep on loving him and you got to keep on trusting him because he said he will bless you. Amen. See, something about the obsession of your assignment, it takes you to places you've never been. You'll find yourself shutting yourself in, speaking to God, talking to God, laying before God in prayer, singing songs and reading his word. You start to meditate. You start to find it out. You can't do nothing without him. Amen. Nothing at all. So, foolish and unlearned questions, avoid them. Avoid them. Somebody come and say, well, what time God got? No, no, God is the author of time. Amen. He has the power to take time, stop time, and give time. He's just the power of time in God. Amen. So you don't know the answer to that. All you know that God is everything. They don't even know, but they're going to ask questions to see what you know. And people are always going to know how much you know about the Lord. Amen. How long you've been walking with the Lord. Are you really saved? You don't do this no more. You don't do that no more. You don't do this. Stop lying. And they tell you, you stop lying. They tell you, stop lying. But you know how you're living. Amen. You know how you're living. Can I get a witness? So, number five, learn to severe any relationship that does not feed your addiction to God's presence and your obsession to complete his assignment in your life. In other words, relations of relationships, you won't have to just cut off. Because some folk ain't talking about nothing. And those that, that feed, you have to use what's going to feed your addiction for God. See, when you get a vision for God, you'll find yourself studying in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the middle of the night. You'll find yourself studying. Why? Because that word is life. Amen. That word changes you. It brings out a new you. The more you study, the more you learn, the more you know. So if you earn, you, when, you, when you learn, you earn. Amen. And a lot of times we don't. We just pick it up once on Sunday. No, you need that Bible seven days a week. Every day you need it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, midnight child. And if you start to eat on that, why? Because that's a way of life. Amen. And I guarantee if you stay in your word and trust God, you won't be sinning. Amen. You ain't got time to sin. You're too busy reaching God. Amen. He said, if you reach him, you're going to find me. Second Thessalonians 3.14. Second Thessalonians 3.14. He says, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Like I said, some relationships you have, you had to cut off. Well, you're at my boy, man. We grew up, but your boy ain't trying to grow. Your boy's still stuck in the same old way that he used to be. And since he's stuck in the same way he used to be, if you ain't careful, you're going to be right back there too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have you noticed since you've been serving God, the enemy always trying to break your focus? But when you become obsessed with your focus, oh, there's a difference going to happen. Because you feed off the word of God. So Satan dreads the completion of your assignment. Satan, he dreads it. The completion of your assignment. You have assignment. You say, well, Pastor, I, I just finished the assignment. God has another assignment for you. Amen. 
One thing about God, he keeps assignments for you. Amen. And but Satan, he he drifts it. He don't want you completing. He don't really want you start nothing. Each act of obedience can destroy a thousand satanic plans. I'll say that again. Each act of obedience can destroy a thousand satanic plans. My instructions had already arrived. My inner peace was proof that I was in the center of God's will with my assignment. Amen. See, you got to know, and you're going to know when God gives you an assignment and you in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God going to talk to you because everything is against you. Amen. Look like ain't nothing going your way. It ain't supposed to go your way. It got to go God's way. Amen. And when you obsess with God, whatever God do, it's all right Amen. because it's from God. When you insist on building your life around your assignment, you have to build your life around your assignment. Wrong relationships will die. Mm. Oh yeah, I'll say that again. When you insist on building your life around your assignment, the assignment that God gives you, you know He ain't giving us He ain't giving assignment. Come to church. Amen. That's assignment. And listen, study, pray, fellowship, worship. That's an assignment. Amen. He says, when you insist on building your life around your assignment, wrong relationship will die. Mm. Folks will say, I'm sick of you going to church. You're always talking to church. Always to church. What are you going to do? That's all you know at the church. I don't want to be bothered with you. When you don't party no more. No. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to party because the simple fact I'm having a feast in my word. Me and God have a relationship, a personal relationship. And God never lets me down. He always keeps me just like that bunny, going, 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 and going. And folks be running away from you. Why? Because they can't control you like they used to. So, right relationships will be born when you be obsessed with your assignment. It says, I have said a, it a thousand times, the best way to disconnect from wrong people is to become obsessed with doing the right thing. Amen. Have you noticed that you've been doing the right thing for we looking at you funny? What are they doing? They be seeing stuff. They be saying, mm-hmm. Ain't that much God in the world? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. See, it takes a made-up mind to serve God. If your mind ain't, ain't made, you ain't going to serve. Amen. Mm -mm. No, no, no. You ain't. I don't care who you are. It ain't, ain't going to work. Your mind have to be made up to serve Him. So, when your obsession is to do the right thing, wrong people will find you unbearable because you want to do the right thing. You don't have to worry about finding love on a two-way street and they're lost and on a lonely highway. What you doing on the highway if you found love on a two-way street? Mm -hmm. You got ran over. So it is permissible for others to share their dreams. But it is disappointing to discover that that they want nothing to do with you or your assignment. It is, it is very disappointing to discover that they want nothing to do with you because you have discovered your assignment. And God has an assignment for us to do, but we have to make up our mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Amen. you look, the same assignment that God gave you, he said, I want you to complete it. Amen. He said, when you complete that, I got something else for you. Mm -hmm. can, can, can God trust us? 
These are real, but can we be loyal? We have to make them, it starts in the mind, it starts on the inside. It ain't about people, it's about him. People either with you or against you. It is rewarding that the Father will reward you 100-fold for your obsessions to do his plan. He's going to reward you when you do the assignment that he has for you. A lot of times we be looking for love in the wrong places. Or we be asking for this and looking for this and think it's there. Mm -mm. It's all in God. Everything we want, everything we need is in him. Amen. When we look at Jesus, he was obsessed with going to the cross. Mm -hmm. Pain and suffering. He was obsessed. His mind was there. He was forward. That's why he had to rebuke Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. He said, because you care for the things of the world, not the things of, of, of what my father has, but you care for the things of men. And see, a lot of times, you're going to find out walking this way, folk care for things, material things. It's all about God. It's a God thing. Because material stuff, look, it's temporary. Amen. That's just temporary. And come and go. You can have it all a day and lose the mark. The Bible says, what well, well, the profit of man to gain the whole wide world and die and lose his soul? It's happening, people. Oh, I got this now. I got now. All oh, well and good, but it, do God get the glory? Amen. Is God getting the glory of what he blessed you with? Amen. But a lot of times we think we know how to do it. We don't know how to do nothing. I, know, I don't know how to do nothing without God. Amen. I trust God. Ask him to lead me, guide me, teach me. That's why I study. So so, so I, when, I, when I am obsessed with the work that God has given me, that's where I'm at. Amen. You know, like I said, I don't have friends. I have associates. Yeah, I don't look for friends. Amen. Because, see, when I, I find out about friends, Cain and Judas, they do something to you. Amen. With the quickness. With the quickness, you hear me? Yeah. They laugh in your face, always trying to take your place. They stab you in the back, the neck, and anywhere else they can get you. Amen. That's just the way people are. Amen. Amen. They take your good name and put it out there. Mm -hmm. They lie on you. See, the other thing when people lie on you, and you know they lie, they know they lie, but the devil is getting glory on the lie because it's doing what? Bringing foul to you. But you have to release yourself and trust God. Amen. God said every liar, every man is going to stop. But in the meanwhile, you're going through. If you ain't careful, it can cause depression. Amen. So, he said, it is rewarding that the Father will reward you 100-fold for your obsession to do his plan. Just wanting to do his plan. He said, I'm going to bless you. I got you. Yeah, he, he, he got you. Mm -hmm. he, got, he got you in his hand. And he squeezed it. But he said, can't no man pluck you out. Amen. A lot of times people get what they want to get out. No, I'm in there. Amen. You got to stay there. That's where it's at. Amen. Look like when nothing ain't moving, it's moving. Amen. It's behind the unseen. And when it's moving behind the unseen, you see a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mark 10. I'm going to wrap this up and I'm out of here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to walk in the rain. Huh? <laughs> you ain't wet yet, boy. You rain all week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will. We will praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's amazing when rain and snow come, folk don't show, and folk drive like they crazy. Amen. They do. When they see, when they see rain, snow, they just get crazy. Amen. Got a big sign say stop light say red. They go on so fast they shoot too fast. What was that? That boom. Them kind of folk to start asking. Yeah. And then it's the people get hurt. Oh, yeah. So, then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. That ain't Peter talking about. I left everything. I, I left everything. You know, I was a fisherman going. I left everything, Jesus, to follow behind you. Now, you 
ain't even got to talk to him like that. So, see, Peter, Peter, Peter had a way of always feeling he could express himself or say what he wanted to say to Jesus. But he knew who he was. But he all and you're gonna always have people like that. You got people like that right now. He said, "Lord, bless me today." First thing, how he blessed you, what he gave you, huh? You need what you asked for. But, but, but wait a minute. So that relationship you're gonna wind up cutting off anyway. Amen. Amen. Twenty-nine say, and Jesus answered and said, "Verily I see unto you, there is no man that hath left house." Or brother, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospel. He said, Peter, you talking about, you done left here, y'all, we done left everything. He said, hey, you, you ain't done that. Because sooner, sooner I don't treat you right the way you think I should treat you, you going to go back to the stuff you was doing, because they all went back. That's why folks say, yeah, I'm with you till the end. No, nah, Chucky. No, uh-uh. No, I know what you're trying to do. And that's why you got to be so mindful when you're dealing with people. But he says, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in, in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and la and lands with persecution. He said, listen, I'm going to bless you. He said, listen, God said, I'm going to bless you. And I said, ain't you going to get the glory. I'm talking about right here. Amen. You know, right here. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you with houses. A hundredfold now. With houses, new brethren, new sisters, mothers, Amen. and children, and lands with persecution. <laughs> now, we don't like that part. We don't like that part. No, we don't. We don't want to hear that. Now, look, I, I take all of us stuff, but that persecution stuff, why I got to have persecution I done been through to get what I got. He say, listen, that's part of the blessing. Mm -hmm. He said, I suffered. Jesus suffered. Amen. And he said, I recognize you when persecution comes. I recognize you when suffering and pain and sickness and affliction. He said, I recognize you. Sometimes you'll find yourself in a prayer and look like you can't let the prayer go. Mm -hmm. Or you could be in a worship and you can't let the worship go. That's why I like worship when I worship when I when I worship with God, I worship them. I don't give them around a thousand people. It's me and God. Amen. It's me and God. And they look at you, but how long he gonna keep on praying? How long he gonna keep on worshiping? I'm just tired. Of I'm getting hungry. He's still worshiping. Oh my God, my God. I got a relationship. I adore him. I bless him. He'll be good to me. Amen. Amen. I want God to be pleased. Amen. When you start to please in God, he puts your enemies at bay. Amen. But a lot of times, we, we rise them up. Yeah, you rise them up. But if you get obsessed in your assignment, they ain't going to bother you. They get away from you. Because they can't take you. No more. They can't take it. They can't take it. So they got to find somebody else to work on. And the devil is sly, slick, and wicked, wicked, wicked. He used any and everything to get your attention, to break you from your focus and your faith. But we have to be mindful. We have to be diligent. We have to be consistent. And listen, serving him. Prayer changes things, people. Amen. Sometimes you pray, it look like ain't nothing moving. Hello, somebody. Amen. But it's moving because you don't already talk to Amen. God. And Jesus said, before, before I even pray, my father hears me. He knows what I'm going to say. So if Jesus said that, and we had picked up the nature of Christ, what do you think about you? Amen. You start to pray, and he's going to answer He said, well, 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 I said, Lord, you think, you think Jesus is a little late. Mm -mm. I was on time. Amen. Even when Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, they had a little tootie because he didn't show up. They sent for him and he knew what was going on. Said, my, 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 my brother Lazarus is dying. Lord Jesus said, okay. <laughs> I was, he said, okay. 
It's going to be all right. He's going to be dead. He's just sleep. He's sleep a little bit. That's all. That's all. No, he's going to die. So Jesus shows up for his answer to that. She had, a, she had a real attitude. I believe she wanted to smack him. I believe she did. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised when the people mind. Yeah. And Jesus showed up and looked at her. How you done? He said, <laughs> she looked at him. Hey, Jesus, if you he was here, my brother Lapis would not die. She knew that Jesus wouldn't let that happen. But you, I said for you four days ago, you just not showing up. He said, it was good that I stayed away. We're talking about that time, love time. But yeah. he said, he said, it was good that I stayed away. I used to think about that. I said, what the why are you staying away? That was his boy. That was his friend. And he loved him. But we always remember, God gonna get glory out of your life because of what it looked like. If it had to bring death to save your soul, your, your children's children, so he will let it be. Yes. So, so when he said, she said, if he was here, we wouldn't have none of the problem. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus said, I know. He should rise again. And she's still fat mouthing, you know, like y'all do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, she do. Yeah, she do. Yeah, well, I know he's going to rise again at the resurrection. She just said, that's who I am. I am the resurrection. Say what? That's who I am. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My sister, <laughs> she's over there at your feet listening to what you're talking about. Because she cares. Listen, she was obsessed with what he was talking about. He was talking about his kingdom. Amen. And she said, no, you tell her, get up, get up off that chair, get in here and help us fry this chicken, a potato salad, and collard green, but we got to feed these people. He said, she said, mm -hmm. she cares for the things that are the kingdom. And you cares for the things of the people, and you're mad at me because I didn't come in four days to raise your brother. Now I looked at that. But Jesus said, let me fix it all up. Show me where you at. And he goes down. It's amazing how people watch you because they knew you about something. <coughs> they all up on the hills. They was all around looking. And Jesus went to the tomb. But one thing he did before he said anything to the tomb, Lazarus, he bent down and talked to his father. He said, Father, let this resurrection be for your glory. He said, get the glory. You see, that's why he stayed like he did. Because he wanted his father to get the glory. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a miracle worker. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that he prayed, he got up. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Mm -hmm. I guess Lazarus, I sometimes she was down. I knew you don't know what Jesus, somebody's calling my name. That must be Jesus. Because he don't know what to bring life. Mm -hmm. He got on the other and stood in the door. Now, it's amazing. He stood in the door with the mummy clothes. He looked like a mummy. And he stood there, right? But he heard Jesus. Jesus always called him. Something about the call of Jesus. When Jesus called you, something will happen. And he stood there and the people, <laughs> the people looked and they said, see, it wasn't Timothy, not, not Timothy, not Matthew and Mark. They went behind Jesus, behind Lazarus, pushing him out of there. But nobody there. And he stood there. And the people looked. They was hollering and screaming and looking, but they was watching Jesus. And Jesus saw, because he called him, his voice brought him up out of his sleep. Okay, dead, sleep, what the line. And he stood there. And the people said, oh my God, what kind of power was this? But he wasn't funny. He spoke to the death. He said, death, turn him loose. The boy started getting up doing the touchy roll. <laughs> he got to go on doing the happy feet. Dance on with Jesus. We don't got a meal and left. You don't hear no more about him. Ain't that amazing? Amen. Isn't that amazing? Yes. God will still in mysterious ways. That boy just dance. But he never danced like that before. 
You know, and people was looking at it, they was like, the people, they looked, the people was running, the people started running and howling. All you see is dust up on the hills. They were running back. Everybody had to go back and what? Tell. See, Jesus do things for folk to go back. Tell. Then he do things for you not to say anything. That's why he say, some folk, I can tell, I know they're going to they, they, they tell. Folk that tell not to tell, going to tell. He said, they didn't tell anyway, but they're going to see this today. That's why the extension of the four days that he took. God was getting glory out of that, that, that whole shebang. Oh, yes. They was, they was in fear. What, what, Jesus? The power he has? Yeah. Martha, put that chicken bone. Put that chicken down. Yeah. My brother. <laughs> she cooked the food now. They, you know, but all I'm saying, you got, you, you, when, you, when you get into Scripture, when you, when you really get involved in Scripture and what Jesus does, and how he does it, it is remarkable. Amen. Yes, it does. It can blow a mind. Because their minds is blown. They left everything. The kids is running hard. Everybody's running. Even the donkey was going, hee ha ha, hee ha ha ha. Everybody was getting up out the way. But look, they know he was gone. Because they were saying, he stank. He been down there a little long. He stank too. He said, no. Mm-mm. That boy came out here. Smelling all good, man. Little cologne, cologne. God, the spirit, spirit, he was a cologne, you know. He went out there, yeah. He was cool as he wanted to be. I say, wow, it is amazing. <laughs> sleep like that. They say dead. They would say dead. They say sleep. She said, yeah. If he was here, he wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, she, she's mouthy. Mouthy like Peter. I did that little mouthy. Yeah, had something, like but not Mary. Mary said, feet. Learning about the kingdom. Because once you start to learn about the kingdom, it's gonna, your attitude is going to change. Amen. Your character is going to change. Amen. And when that starts to change, you, see, that's why our priorities have to be in line with him. Amen. Not with people, with him. When, they, when our priorities are in, in line with him, things are going to happen. Amen. So, fight for your focus. Fight for your focus. You ever know, just like it rain, it raining, you know how your windows get fogged up if you're driving? Either you pull over, get your old rag out, clean the turn the defrost on. You, you want to do something because you want what? See. You want to see. Amen. Right. Yeah, yeah. you, you, you ride and a, a, a gorilla jump on your car. Now, I know doggone well. You feel the pressure. <laughs> And you see him up there there for a banana. <laughs> Give me a banana. Give me a banana. He jump off. You getting up out of there. <laughs> you use your, you going to clean that windshield. In other words, we say, I want to see. I want to see. So you got to fight for your focus. Amen. And you got to battle hard. You can't be no chump in his army. Amen. You got to build walls that strengthen your concentration. You got to build them up. Ignore the jeers, the laughter, and the criticism that you are obsessed. Because they're going to talk about you. Amen. I'm talking about you. The person said, hey, by the way, they still don't say anything. You rub in the prison, praying, laying hands on the belly, belly, on oh, the Yeah, man, got crazy, man. Yeah, something wrong with it. Mm. No, that's my assignment. Amen. And I'm, when I'm obsessed with my assignment, matter of fact, through, through my life, my assignment is to go to preach and teach the gospel. Amen. I left my family and came with the angels of the Lord. Amen. I went on to do the work of the Lord. Came back home. Everything is all right. Got to go back out again. Monday, Monday, prison. Tuesday, church. Wednesday, prison. Thursday, prison. Friday, church. Saturday, prison. Sunday, bam. Y'all got me again. In other words, been busy. I didn't know how to rest. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know how to rest. I got my rest while I was preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But I look at it now. I say, Lord, I thank you. I slept a whole day. I say, what the what? I say, well, look right here. You hungry? I ain't hungry. I'm getting I'm going to go. You know, you sleep and slobber. Y'all know. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. The baby, she, she came up. She said, yeah, Pop, you got a package. I said, thank you. So I said, I think I put it on the floor. And when she said, Grandpa, ain't you going to open it? I said, it ain't for you, it's for me. She said, I 
want to know what's in it, Grandpa. People bring you stuff. I need to know what's in there. I said, can't you see I'm sleeping? Wake up! I said, but it's for me. Yes, let me see so I'll know it's for you. But who name on it? It don't matter, Grandpa. We family. Hey, God, you, you're talking, you're talking heavy. You're talking about, you're going to eat? I said, I'm going to eat. You got any snacks around here? I say, snacks? Snack you. The snack is all on down there. She said, open the package. Then she said, somebody knocking on the door. I said, who is it? She said, it's another package. I said, it's with Uncle Daniel. It's Uncle Daniel. Everybody getting packages around here. How come I don't have a package? You know what I'm saying? She watched everything. She listened to everything. Now, when she hear me talking about they praying, calling on the Lord, she said, mm-hmm, amen, and she ain't coming no further. <laughs> she ain't coming, she's going to run up in. Come back in, he said, he's still praying. Yeah, I'm still praying. Grandpa, you be talking to the Lord like that? Wow. No, I don't see him. I said, you don't see him? You don't know who, 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 who? And she go like that. I said, he just, he just so good. She said, he got to be. <laughs> he got to be. Because you, 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 you changes when you do that thing in there, that, that prayer thing. You, there's a change goes on. I say, yeah, baby. It's all well and good. I say, you want to pray with me? She said, I say, God, with your mouth. She said, you talk. In other words. <laughs> so it's amazing. So I said, I thank you. Amen. See, I thank you, Grandpa. I got to go now. I'm going to get magic and coke. You had three, you had three of them already. It's all right. It's good for me. It's good for me. I want some cucumbers too. I said, go down and tell your grandma. She said, I'm going down there. And she was running, Grandma, fix it for me. But grandpa up there, he's still praying and sleeping. In other words, I'm talking to the Lord. I got a relationship with the Lord. Amen. You know, he, sometimes he take my sleep from me. Yet I could be in the bed, I could be downstairs, I could be outside, I could be in my car, whatever. I have a relationship. It's like it's like I could be talking to somebody and the Lord say, cut it off. I'm going to speak to you. It's like that. It's how we walk. And he goes, he, he takes me to a scripture. And we take me to a scripture. Then I what happened? I started reading that scripture. I started going into it, seeing what he's saying. And I look at the time when he said what he said, what was happening during that time of that scripture brings it right up to the day. Ain't nothing new under the sun, people of God. God give you a word, he's gonna give you a word. And it says there. Yeah. So I'm thankful of that, but even in my assignment, thank God for the assignment. I have, I have many assignments, but I also have many assignments to give out Amen. as well. Oh, yeah. If you want to learn, all you got to do is just come and show up. Get your puzzle and paper. Amen. Have Amen. your mind ready to receive. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. And you're going to be challenged in what you learn. Yes. Somebody ain't going to like what you're learning because they don't know. They say, well, brother, they told me that Jesus lived on Columbia Avenue, 15 Columbia on the second floor of a rear room apartment. And Jesus lived out. He said, yeah, man. He said, the disciples live on the first floor. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. But who told you that? He said, I don't know. Can you tell me the truth? Oh, is that the truth? Is that the truth? They don't know. That's why they need a Bible. That's why a lot of times you let people read it. Then you explain it to them what the Word of God is saying. This is how you grow and that happens because you're obsessed in learning God's word. Somebody's going to ask you. I, I, I call him a little preacher right there. Last Sunday, I, I'm sitting up here. He said to me, he said, Pastor. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> the first thing I said, uh-uh. Because he always had questions. Because he wanted to know. He said, Pastor, you, um, you, ever, um, <laughs> you ever flew an airplane? I said, yeah, son. I used to fly every day. I was in the Air Force. He said, what? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, oh, man. Well, what did he do? I started spraying to him, you know, what I do and everything. I said, but now, uh, you ain't going to get me on the second floor roof. <laughs> he said, he started laughing. <laughs> I'm 35,000 feet up in the air, just flying and going back and forth, you know. He said, you want, you, you want to say the Lord that? No, I want to say the Lord that, I'm doing my thing. 
I was getting the power tie. Hello, they fly all over. I'm just going with them. Just, yeah. I was just, just, just great. See, see, flying airplane business, VFR, visual flight rule, then there's IFR, instrumental flight rule. I'm in there with them. They came to Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, I would say it then. I'm talking about now. Talking about then, he gave one of them. One of them, you know, no names. Yeah. You know, no names. Y'all know what no names yeah. And they poked that boy and said, hey, no cat. He said, yeah, he just put that thing on IFR. That mean he hit that. That mean the control tower drives that thing. Because he visually, they got to drive it. They was up there laughing and grinning. The plane just flying. <laughs> Instrument flight rule. That's what it's called. That's what it do. And I'm suddenly laughing to this thing go, oh. I said, boy, you was crazy. I said, no, nah, I was high. <laughs> and I want everybody else to be high. Okay. Ah. Ah. But I've been delivered. Amen. I've been delivered. See, you learn. So I told him, I said, look, man. And he, he was checking out everything I was saying. He said, you know. <laughs> he said, you know, Pastor. I'm great you on the plane. I said, yeah. He said, I don't know. I said, <laughs> I said, just keep swallowing. He said, swallowing? I said, get you some gum. Swallow because your ears going to pop yeah. when you start to ride, right? Mm -hmm. He said, he looked at me like, I said, you have a nice day? He said, okay. <laughs> but he was thinking because I was explaining to him my experience. He said, well, what, 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 what do you he do? <laughs> I wouldn't say regard them. I was really a backslider on the run, but God kept me to do the work for him. So since he kept me and he changed me, he delivered me, I'm obsessed with the assignments that he gives me. Oh, I'm making my business. My son is sneaking the house, the boat, 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 they sneaking out. I have no light on. It's a light I put. Look like a coal miner. All the lights out. Coal miner. I'm in there, but people still is it. He hear everything. I said, what? I don't hear nothing. I said, you better answer. <laughs> you better answer. Don't tell me something. I want to know if you paid any mortgage this month. I want to know who you are there. And I'm walking with that on it. Look at me today. Damn, oh, what are you doing? I said, I'm studying. I said, man, something wrong with him. Two or three o'clock, I'm on here. I'm trying to sneak in the house. <laughs> Go to sleep. Go and do what you got to do. But what I'm saying, I watch. This is what I'm studying. I'm listening. And 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 my son said, he said, what's in that book? <laughs> and he keeps studying. Tell him why he's in that book. <laughs> now he's in the book. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> in the book. Under the book. Y'all over the book. Y'all in the book. <laughs> why? <laughs> Prayer changes things. Amen. You know, but it's the life that you live. It's the life that you live. So when we look at situations, you know, God blesses you with the two things wrong. You're going to find yourself being obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, when you're obsessed with it, you ain't going to find folk that are going to be obsessed like you. He said, look, we just go to church on Sunday. Go oh, about doing it. We don't worry about it. Don't worry about the week. Catch you on Sunday. And when it comes Sunday, just as calm. And you even praise the Lord. Thank you. They say, well, you're all deep now. Not deep, you have a relationship. Relationship makes you deep. Amen. Amen. So, can't worry what people think about you. Amen. It's what you think about God. Amen. In my conclusion, those who are obsessed with their assignment rule this planet called Earth. Those who are obsessed with their assignment rule this planet call earth. And let me say this to you. When you get like that, it don't matter. I think said last week I, I ministered to I said that um, chase the kingdom and not money. Even in that message, money will chase you. Amen. It will come to you to do the things that you need to do. But you got to remember this. God is in control. We're living in a time him and him People are killing, stealing, and bringing disaster on every hand. Folk, mine's just gone. 
Why? Because the simple fact, Satan is taking completely control of minds of people. And a mind is a terrible thing to waste. You have to be careful and mindful who you dealing with. Because devils are all, they, they everywhere. But if you got love for God and trust God, the angels of the Lord are going to protect you. Amen. You're going out and you're coming in. Amen. That's why he said you don't have to fight in this battle because this battle is the Lord's. He's going to take care of you. Amen. But keep in mind, stay faithful to God. Be consistent in seeking him. Be consistent in fasting and praying. Let him attack. I, see, see, I'm always in warfare. He, I'm always in warfare. And that lets me know he got me in the hollow of his hand mm -hmm. because he recognized the pain, the suffering, mm -hmm. the affliction, the persecutions, the life. He recognizes that. That's why you got to be blameless. Mm -hmm. When you're blameless, God can use you. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness from my Amen. So as the church is standing, yeah, y'all all comfortable in them tears. How you Praise the Lord. I know you're going to. What is the truth? I hope that this word has helped you. Yes, you sir. I hope that you learned something from it. Yes. And remember this, that your, 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 your whole assignment, you will succeed only when your assignment becomes an obsession. When you get obsessed with your assignment, then you're going to be successful. Father, we thank you for this time and space. Thank you for how you blessed us. We thank you for this word. And we give you praise and honor. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.